Stand by. Dick Tracy is on the air. Now, the makers of Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice, those two nourishing, delicious cereals that are shot from guns, bring you another thrilling Dick Tracy detective adventure. Big guns. That's the way they sound when they're making puffed wheat and puffed rice. It's a special Quaker process that makes it possible for you alert boys and girls and all your friends to enjoy nourishing wheat and rice every day in this most digestible, most delicious form. Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are two swell, different flavors, you know. So you can have puffed wheat one day, then puffed rice the next for a delightful change. When the nourishing grains of wheat and rice are shot from the Quaker guns, the grains are actually exploded to eight times their normal size. They're plump and crisp and nut-like, as different as day and night from ordinary cereals. Shooting them from guns makes Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice specially easy to digest, too, which means that you get the food energy you need to be as quick-thinking and fast-acting as Dick Tracy is much more quickly and easily. So for a real treat that you and Mother and Dad all enjoy for breakfast... Ask Mother to get some Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice at the grocery store. The Black Pearl of Osiris, which Dick Tracy wants safely returned to Egypt, is concealed in the secret compartment of a special ring given to Tracy by Humi Batik, a member of the cult of Osiris. In a hand-to-hand encounter with members of a secret gang who were trying to get the pearl, Dick ripped the coat from the back of one of his assailants. In our last episode, Dick examined the dust taken from the coat with a vacuum cleaner and thereby narrowed the search for the gang's headquarters. Pat, heading a searching party, telephoned and gave Dick a message in code. What was in that message? What's the news, Pat? You were right about a mattress factory being a hideout for these gangsters. We watched all three of them, and it just happened that I was watching the right one. Six men have gone into that dark building over there in the past half hour, Dick. Two more went in since I called you on the phone. Good. Sounds like the place we want. Where are your men? One moment. Here they come out of doorways and alleys. All right, boys. Yeah, all right. We're ready now. Yeah. Higgins, yeah. Take, take four men and go around and guard the back of that factory. Okay. Jones, yep. you take another four and stay out here in front. Right. The rest of you men come with me. Okay. What are you yeah, going to do, right Dick? Me. A surprise raid. Walk in and nab him, Pat. All right, boy, I'm with you. And I hope we nail the big shots. All right, then. Let's go. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. Try that door, Pat. Right. It's unlocked, Dick. Good. A dim light burning at the top of those stairs. Come on, you men. All right. Come on. They're in there, Pat. You can hear them talking. What do we do? Follow me. I'm going to surprise them. When I give the word, all of you rush at that door and break it in. Right. All set? Yeah. yeah. Then now. Get him up. Get him up. Get him up fast. Get out of there, you. Come on. Move. Move. Well, well. May I inquire what this means? Are you the head of this mob? I don't quite understand. This is a factory. These men are my employees. We'd met here tonight to discuss something pertaining to our, well, to new shipments. Would you be good enough to explain your vile intentions? Certainly there's no call for a raid by the police. I'm sorry, it won't do. I have a fair memory for faces, and I can positively identify at least four of these men... As the ones who attacked my friends and myself earlier this evening. Yeah, and so can I. Why, this is preposterous. You can't get away with this. We'll see about that. You, I suppose, are the high mogul I've heard about. I'm afraid I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, don't you? Oh, no, I'm sure Now, my suggestion to you, Mr. High Mogul, is to relax. Because we're taking you and your friends down to headquarters. And so, if you're smart, you'll talk now. When it might do you some good. All right. All right, I'll talk. You bet you will. And talk fast. You got the high mogul, all right. He used to be the owner of a couple of art galleries, but they folded up. Now he's in the game of stealing art treasures and paintings, priceless books, anything some collectors will pay a high price for. Go on. Well, Dryden Small was a member of the gang, although the mogul is really the brains. Small was going on a trip to Egypt, and the mogul arranged with him to steal the heart of Osiris at Black Pearl and bring it back. Well, you know the rest. Yes, yes, that's all the information we want out of you. Have that confession typed and bring it in for him to sign. Right, sir. Uh, now, listen, now, I, I get a break out of this, don't I, if I turn state's evidence? You'll get as much of a break as I can give you. 
I'll take it, Dick. Hello? Yeah? Oh, just a moment. For you, Dick. The tomb. Oh, thanks, Pat. Tracy speaking. Batik wants to see me. See me and Junior. What's he want with Junior? Oh, you don't know, huh? All right. We'll be down in a little while. Pat, I've got to go down to the prison. Homie Batik wants to see me and Junior. Says it's urgent. Have this bird sign that confession and then send him down to the tombs. Right. I'll look in on the high Mogul while I'm down there, too. I want to have a talk with that fellow anyway. And as, as I was telling you, Mr. Tracy, this high Mogul fellow has been very quiet. Now, the people to him all day. He just lies there in his cot in cell 15. He doesn't say a thing. He doesn't even stir. I see. All right, I'll go in to see him after I finish with Batik. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Here, Batik's cell is right down this way. What do you think Kumi Batik wants with me, Dick? I don't know, Junior. We'll soon find out. Well, here you are, sir. Well, Batik. Oh, do come in, Mr. Tracy and uh, Junior. I'm Hello. very happy to see you both. What's on your mind? I understand that you have captured the High Mogul. Yes, yes, he won't worry us any longer, Batik. I wish I felt as certain about that as you seem to feel, Mr. Tracy. The Mogul, you know, is an extraordinarily clever man. I don't doubt it. We'll keep our eyes open, you can depend on that. Batik, when are you going to send your agent to me, the man who's to carry back the Black Pearl of Osiris? Oh, he will come soon. He has at last made the way clear, I believe, for the safe transportation of the Black Pearl. Yes, he will come to you shortly. Say, Mr. Batik, what about me? Didn't you say you had a surprise for me? <laughs> yes, I have. And I was just about to discuss it with you. Earlier this week, I gave to your great and good friend, Dick Tracy, a special ring which contained a secret compartment for carrying the Black Pearl of Osiris. Do you know the legend of that ring? Well, no, I don't. Uh, neither do I, Batik, and I think I'd like to hear it. Oh, you shall, my friend. Many hundreds of years ago, there lived in the city of Fezan in the province of Libya a certain prince named Bani Suef. He was a great man, this prince. But alas, there came a time when the young prince was wounded on the field of battle, dangerously wounded. Gee, his father's heart was full of sorrow, for he feared that his son might die, and death seemed very close. Then one night, the pharaoh, his father was awakened from his sleep by a vision, a vision of Osiris the Great. Ah. Osiris gave to the pharaoh a ring, a ring in which there was a secret compartment, and in this compartment was some fluid that looked like water, but was not water. And Osiris said, Take that fluid from out of the ring and anoint your son with it, and he will be well. And then he disappeared. Did he get well? Then the pharaoh leaped from his bed, and rushed into the room where his son lay dying. He opened the secret chamber of the ring and anointed his son with the fluid, and lo, the eyes of the young prince opened. The fever left him. Once again, he was strong and healthy. Gosh! And all was well. That junior, Mr. Tracy, is the legend of the secret ring of Osiris. It's a wonderful story. Gee, I'll say it is. But, uh... You didn't call us down here just to hear a legend. Oh, no, no. Earlier this week, when I gave the secret ring to you, Mr. Tracy, I could not help noticing the eyes of your young friend, Junior, as he studied the ring. They were wide with eagerness. He said that he would like to have a ring just like it. And so, as a small token of my gratitude to you, Dick Tracy, I wish to present this to your young friend. Wow! It's a ring. A secret ring of Osiris. Yes, we have had it made especially for you. Just like the ring of Osiris. And it is all for you, Junior. We have made one special change. We know how greatly you admire Dick Tracy. So your ring bears the likeness of Dick Tracy on it. We thought you would prefer it that way. Oh boy, I'll say I do. Gee, it's wonderful. I'll wear it always, and I am sure it will bring you good luck. I certainly will. Gee, thanks. Thanks a lot. Gee, Dick, isn't it a beauty? And that secret compartment, I can make good use of that for, for carrying secret messages and things. Yeah. Gee, Mr. Batik, you... Oh, gee, you're swell. <laughs> I'm glad yeah. it brings you happiness, my young friend. Gee, Dick, now I've got a ring just like yours. 
Except that it's got your picture on it, and that makes it better than yours. Oh, boy! Batik, I... I certainly appreciate this thoughtfulness on your part, and... Junior, I'm glad... Oh, Mr. Tracy, Mr. Tracy! Yes, Keeper, what is it? W- will you please come with me? I, I think something's happened to that high mole girl guy. What? Uh, wait here for me, Junior. You say you think something's happened to him? Mm-hmm. Yes, I... I Look, he looks dead. There, there, here's his cell door. Remember I told you he was very quiet all day long? Well, I went in to have a look at him, and well... Well, he, I'll see for yourself. Uh, no pulse. He is dead. I wonder who could have done this. It must have been a heart attack. Yes, yes, probably. But the medical examiner will undoubtedly be able to tell us exactly what happened. Uh, hospital again, Joe? Yeah, we're taking this fellow over to the police hospital, to the medical examiner. Oh. Someone kill him? No, but he died in a strange way. Just passed out in his cell. Oh. They didn't even know he was dead for a few hours. Oh, uh, a... gentlemen. But, holy mackerel. It's the dead guy. What? He's talking. I am not dead, my friend. At least I am sufficiently alive to keep you covered with a gun. You'd better do what I say. And I warn you, do it quickly. What is the answer to the riddle of the High Mogul's miraculous recovery? And what will happen if he makes his escape? Well, that's a surprise. And get ready for another one, because it's time for the Dick Tracy Secret Service Patrol meeting, brought to you by the makers of delicious, nourishing Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. And here comes Dick Tracy with Junior to tell you all about the big surprise he has for you. The meeting will now come to order. Okay, Dick, we're all ready for that big surprise. Well, I don't know whether you can stand another surprise, Junior. You were nearly bowled over when Homie Batik gave you that secret ring. Say, let me see your ring, Junior. Here it is. Isn't it a beauty? Mm -hmm. See this swell picture of Dick on it? And here's the secret compartment. You see how it works? Say, that's great. You're a mighty lucky boy. Gee, you can carry secret messages in there, just the way Dick keeps the black pearl of Osiris. Junior, how do you think the patrol members would like to have secret rings just like yours? What? The patrol members? Secret rings for them? You mean a real secret ring like this for every patrol member? Holy smoke! Well, that's, that's emphatic, if not clear. But I gather you think they'd like them. Oh, I'll say they would, Dick. Anybody give anything for a secret Dick Tracy ring like this. Well, I've talked to the Quaker man about it, and he says that our friends who make Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice will do everything they can to help. That's right. They're glad to make it possible for all the patrol members to get secret Dick Tracy rings free with Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice box tops if we can find a jeweler to make the rings, and we're looking into that now. So save some Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice box tops over the weekend, boys and girls. You know, when Dick Tracy makes up his mind to have secret rings made for all of you, you can count on it. And believe me, when you see one of those beautiful gold-plated rings, you'll want one. Listen Monday and learn how to get your secret Dick Tracy ring free. In the meantime, get your Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice box tops. Don't send any in yet. Wait till we tell you on Monday. But look in the pantry for those famous red and blue Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice packages. Tear off the tops as soon as they're empty and save them so you can get a beautiful secret Dick Tracy ring free. And if there isn't any Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice in the pantry now, ask Mother to get you some at the grocer's. Then you and Mother and Dad can join the thousands of happy families who enjoy those two nourishing, delicious cereals that are shot from guns to give you quick energy. fans, calling all Dick Tracy fans. Stand by for another exciting Dick Tracy adventure Monday at this same time. That is all. <laughs>